So, renewing a PC or making it brand spanking new. So I have a few examples here behind me. What you need to know about renewing a PC, right? There are certain PCs that you got to be aware can't be renewed. Um, so in the desktop side of things, Dell, HP, Lenovo, Gateway and Apple. They can't be renewed in the sense of making them brand spanking new with new software in them and hardware. Because the new hardware that goes into the new types of machines won't fit the old machines in most cases. Now, um, if it's tablets or laptops, then again, that's very obvious. The new models of laptops and tablets and and phones won't um so if you had an old laptop the new models the actual board won't fit in it the, the systems board so just to show you so this is a systems board for a laptop and uh the new model of this board won't fit into the old laptops so basically you're out buying a new laptop so if you have a laptop that's three or four years old and you try and say right i want to renew this pc you can't do it because that old shell won't fit the new systems board so the shell in other words the the the, the case that fits it the the board it won't it just won't fit because they change buttons and they change the processor and they change the shape of the fans, the, the direction of the heat sinks and everything. So it's just humanly not possible to switch out boards from an old laptop to a new systems board. So it's just not possible to do. And the same thing goes with um, tablets as well. So, and your phones. So the desktop is a different kettle fish altogether. Now, some of the Dells, HPs, Lenovo's, Gateways, Apples, you can upgrade them to new boards if they're back, the, the actual back of the PC is shaped to fit a standard, um, standard motherboard. Now, with the Dells, for example, and some of the HPs, they shift these back um, input output ports to the opposite side. So the generic um, motherboards won't fit in them. So you have to either take off, remove the back and put on a new back. So you, you need um, to basically cut the case apart in order to make it fit. So that's not an option either. So custom um, cases is the only way to go if you want to renew a PC. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, you can make this uh, um, case um, completely mobile. So you could sit this in your um, kitchen or your bedroom or your living room or out in a, get, out in a shed and uh, get it connected into the house wirelessly and you could have little wireless screens like this guy to view the information that's on the hard drive which is where you do all your work anyway um, that basically the hard drive sends the information out onto the ram and you view it on a screen such as this or the the normal monitors that that come with desktops but it's so easy now you can put it through the network, your your router or whatever, you know. So this is the only machine really that can be upgraded. So the, it's just a better way. Um, instead of going out buying new laptops every three or four years or tablets every three or four years, they, they just don't last. Nothing lasts. Like even the desktops don't last. So at least with the desktop, you have the option to renew the systems board and replace the uh, you know the different cards that are in it you know bring them up to to um, new technology so every three or four years you should be doing this anyway 
if you want to stay current and you want to use all the latest software and that kind of stuff. Now this particular machine is still working and it was made in 2004. So that makes it 12 years old and it's running on XP and it's it's a good enough machine for checking email and general kind of looking out on the internet because there's only yeah, about a gig of RAM in this machine and so if you were watching videos or doing anything um, extra out online um, it won't it will be basically very slow at, at picking up um, video and all that kind of stuff so you, you, you'd be waiting a fairly long time in order for to be able to view it so the good thing to do is to upgrade them and this is a lot cheaper a way of doing it because you can change the systems board say your hard drive is okay and you can still install a new operating system on it and all that good stuff this is the way to go if you want cheap and fully mobile and you know when something goes wrong with it it can be fixed as opposed to your laptop if you break the screen right you can replace that if you just if the the hard drive gets corrupted or it just dies you can replace that but if the systems board in the laptop dies or gets old or can't use new software like it used to then you're out buying another new laptop so desktop is the way to go and it's so easy to do look there's thousands of videos out here on youtube great guys showing you how to do all this stuff all oh, there's loads of um videos on how to do it so it is very easy to do now the main problem with renewing a pc a desktop pc is knowing the parts that you want so what you want the computer to be able to do so i'm going to show you a um, pcpartpicker.com it's a website where it if you select a particular type of board that you want um, again it's not hard to figure this stuff out again loads of videos out here on on youtube showing you how to do all this but the main thing is that once you pick a motherboard then you have to pick say if it was an intel motherboard so it had an intel processor in it you would have to go with an intel processor and you'd have to have a particular type of ram and if it was say an amd board then you'd have to have an amd processor again all these things they sound complicated but they're not there's just base there's only two makes of processors for for desktops and it's just getting that right um other than that there isn't a problem with upgrading but as i said i'm going to show you how to pick the proper parts the, the parts that you want say now if you're looking for something that wants to play games then you'll need a pretty good graphics card unlike the one that's in this which is only a small uh, viewing basically viewing for monitor card um, you're, you're not going to get any spectacular results out of it so you need the extra power for running games because the graphics are so you know there's, there's a lot of power being pumped into the the actual graphics of the processors so it needs a lot of power and therefore you need a graphics card in order in order to run games with you know with with good bit rates you know so so that's pretty much it i'm going to show you now um how to um use uh, pcpowerpicker.com which is a great website for getting the parts the, the, the getting the parts right so that you know exactly that everything is going to fit when you purchase the parts and again as i said this is so easy to do you know it, it, there's loads of videos as i said and this thing another myth that uh, i hear a lot about is these um static discharge straps all new motherboards come with static discharge protection so there's no need for these and there never was a need for these you know that you, you put them on the side of your case while you're working on the board i have never used one of them except for maybe the first one or two times i built a computer and there's no need for them because i've built hundreds of computers at this stage thousands if i if i was to think back and 
I have never damaged a board because I didn't have one of these straps on. I've never got a shock. What I usually do before I start is I just, you know, grab a piece of metal and ground yourself. Um, if you are a paranoid, a paranoid Android, use it, but there's no need for it. Okay. So just to debunk that myth. So that's it for now. Um, again, it's so easy. Let me go and show you how to use uh, the part picker website. So I just want to show you this uh, PC part picker. So basically what this enables you to be able to do is build a PC without actually knowing how the different parts tie together. Now there's two main things that you have to be aware of. So you, you have um, build guides here that you can follow and they give you a description of what parts they used and why they used them and what sort of a machine they have with the parts that they used. So you can view them and see completed builds and you can go and check individual parts and see what they're all about. So you just register here, just click on that and type in your name and do, do all the bits and pieces here, the email address, password, make up a password and type in the password a second time. So I'm just going to log in here now and just show you how to use this. So we're going to um, build a PC. So we're going to go into system build. Now I'm going to start a new one. I had one already set up, but we're going to start a new build. So this is what you'll see. So basically the two most important things that you can't make a mistake on. Now this site um, has built into it a compatibility um, program which prevents you from selecting parts that don't uh, that are not compatible with each other. So you start there with the CPU and you pick a CPU of whatever type you, you look it up and see what kind of a PC you want to actually build. So we're just going to use this uh, 4790K i7. Okay, and the compatibility check is uh, set up and working there. Compatibility checks, no issues. Incompatibilities found. No issues, no incompatibilities found. So now with the i7 we have a fan so we don't need to choose a cpu fan unless you're going to be using this machine for gaming um, you would need a um, aftermarket cooler so we're going to move on now to the motherboard now down here you have um, options of what price you want the range of prices you want to set up so if you have a budget, um, you can use this feature in it. So we're going to use the first one there just to show you how to how to actually do it. So again, no compatibility problems came up. And we move on now to the next thing you need to build a computer, which is memory. And we'll go with uh, Vengeance Pro here. And when you click on it, it will show you all uh, the different places that you can buy it from and the prices are there shown as well. Okay, so we're going to go back. We're just going to add that then to our build. Again, the compatibility checks come back with no issues. And the next thing we need for a complete build is a storage, a hard drive. Now, when you're building a a computer, um, I wouldn't build unless I was using an SSD because they are the best drives out there. They're faster than the disk drives and they last longer and you don't have any um, problems with them if you buy from a good manufacturer. So the Samsons are good. The OCZs are good. Um, Kingston not so not so good but if you look at the the bill guides they'll tell you what is good and what is bad but I'll be doing another video anyway showing you how to 
build a cheap computer on this um, PC part picker and also a gaming or editing machine as well. So I'll do that later. Um, so we're going to pick a 250 gig and it's at 65, 66 pounds. So we're just going to put that in there. Video card we don't need unless you're going to be playing a lot of games and stuff. If you're just using your computer for viewing and emails and banking and all that kind of stuff or just searching out online, you don't need a video card unless you're going playing games or editing um, video. So there's a built-in graphics into the i7. So you don't need to get a video card. And the next thing there then is the case. You may have a case already, it depends. So we're just going to pick a normal one. You can go and check these reviews and uh, all that good stuff as well, again, on the build guides. Or you can go into YouTube and check out these um, these models of, of cases or, or any component that's on here. There's uh, loads of re reviews on them. So that's the case. And then the last thing you need is a power supply. And we're going to go with the first one here. Again, I'm just showing you, I'm not going into any detail about the different parts. I'm just showing you how easy it is to actually get the components that are compatible by using this site. Um, as I said, the only way you can make a problem is with the CPU. So you have AMD and you have Intel. They're the two main manufacturers of processors. So if you get an Intel processor then you need an Intel motherboard and same with AMD if you get an AMD processor then you need an AMD motherboard so that's really the only thing that you can mess up on but this site um, prevents that from happening because it gives you this compatibility check okay and not necessary is um, an optical drive, a DVD player or whatever. Um, you can install your operating system um, through a flash drive if you want. Um, there's, so there's no need, but usually people will get an optical drive because they have CDs or DVDs that they want to um, run or play vid video on it or play movies on it or whatever, or music or, or that, okay? And then the operating system. Now, it doesn't give you much choice here. It's all Microsoft Windows here. But um, there is free versions of operating systems like Ubuntu from Linux, which is open source operating system. And I'll be doing another video on that just to show you um, how good it is in compare comparison to Microsoft or Apple um, operating systems. So again, you can set a budget here of your whole build as well so we are pretty much finished here i i um put on ubuntu on most systems that i, I use myself i i um i prefer it because it's faster than microsoft um windows in every way and it gives you more control and you don't have to be paying for software that you use on it uh, either you know because it's all it's all freeware and it's just as good as w windows so our total there is six five five point eight nine pounds so that's how you use um pc part picker if you have any um if you want any information about this um go ahead and let me know here on youtube by adding a comment or whatever. Okay, thanks for watching.